humans have a habit of being disruptive. We are, how you say, extra. Sometimes it's an honest mistake, like when you're trying to help a baby swan and the angry daddy swan just doesn't get it. Sometimes it's very deliberate, like when we drive our vehicles through their protected lands. <laughs> oh shit, Rod. But unlike the animal kingdom, we like to bulldoze and build up, expand borders, then exhaust resources. Are we ignoring some of the more important lessons the natural world can teach us? Most likely. And these animals, like the monkey mafia or any army of emus, just might end up having the last laugh. These creatures are about to school you. Here are 15 times humans messed with the wrong animals. 50 for, for their best. It's uh, not so difficult to organize this transport for one. Bison encounters. Any chance you drive through a national park or a nature preserve where the bison roam, you just might encounter this. In fact, anyone on roads like this can witness these run-ins with bison. But you have to be aware, or else. It's dangerous to be near bison, period. Even if you're on your favorite bike or in the protection of your car, they can and will charge. If a bison that typically can weigh around 1,600 pounds charges you successfully, you might not be around to describe what happens later. A herd of bison at Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming ran toward a car while a family on vacation sat inside the vehicle. The family was enjoying the sight of the stampeding bison until one of the animals plowed right into the car. Convoys of motorbikes have been detoured because of cranky bison. You shall not pass when one of these gets in your way. Encounters with these massive animals have raised plenty of eyebrows. The video is another object lesson on how wildlife versus people encounters can be dangerous. It's bison territory after all. Make sure you follow all safety protocols if you're ever near these mighty beasts. Oh, there's, he's chasing him. Look at this. Oh, did you get that, Garrett? Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Pablo Escobar's out-of-control hippos. A herd of hippopotamuses, once owned by a late Colombian drug baron, has been taking over the countryside near his former ranch, and no one quite knows what to do with them. It was in 2007, 14 years after their owner's death, that people in rural Colombia began phoning environmentalists to report sightings of this peculiar animal. Crime kingpin Pablo Escobar imported four hippos from America back in 1981 for a private zoo. But after his drug empire collapsed, they escaped and have been breeding in the wild ever since, now numbering 80 individuals or more. For more than two decades, they've been watching the eight-square-mile park around them become neglected and overgrown, and then transformed back into a zoo and theme park, complete with water slides. All the while, the hippos themselves thrived and multiplied. And now, they're thriving in the country's river ecosystems. Scientists even suspect that river habitats may benefit from the presence of these non-native hippos, with the large herbivores filling an ecological niche that's been vacant in the region for thousands of years. Thanks to Pablo, this is their turf now. This small herd of wild hippos lives thousands of miles from Africa. <laughs> the Australian Mouse Plague The southern and eastern agricultural regions down under are in the thick of a months-long plague of mice. The infestation comes after years of drought, devastating wildfires, and a period of heavy rain that boosted plant growth, creating ideal conditions for the hungry rodents to reproduce exponentially. Now, farms and fields are overrun with swarms of mice that have taken up residence in the walls of barns and homes, and the farmers say this year's infestation is the worst they've ever seen, and there's no sign that it's letting up anytime soon. Mice are prolific breeders, as they can start to breed when they're just six weeks old and have a litter of six to ten pups every 19 to 21 days after that. That's a lot of mice real quick, and people posting about it online are waking up with mice droppings on their pillows, or at night, you can see the ground moving. They scurry through the streets, chew their way through crops, houses are being overrun, even Australia's businesses are being affected by the mice invasion. Mice plagues can come around every few years here due to a combination of factors. Throw in some favorable weather, lots of good shelter, lots of moisture, and welcome to Australia. They are inside houses, on the walls, on the roofs, inside containers, 
Birds take on chimney. These migratory birds appear to be Vox's swifts and they'll take over your home. As you can see, they roost in chimneys in large groups and in some cases will just end up infiltrating your home completely. And this California family's home was overrun by more than 800 of them in a scene similar to that movie The Birds. The footage shows the flock performing murmurations above the house before hundreds shoot down the chimney of the family's house. The homeowners came home to find the birds flying all over the crib, and they're not alone. Further up the coast, near Santa Barbara, several chimneys were also hit by an onslaught of Swifties. Around 1,000 birds became trapped in the chimney, at least according to the local fire department. They had hoped the flock would fly up and out on their own overnight, but no. When the fire department returned, the birds were still trapped at the base of the fireplace and animal services worked throughout the day to design a chute system to funnel the flock out of the fireplace and release them through the home's back doors. They appear to be Vox Swifts, and these birds migrate south through California each year down to as far as Mexico. <laughs> the polar bear invasion. From birds to bears? Seems animals are really taking over, and this time it's our friendly neighborhood polar bears except they're not supposed to be in our neighborhoods. More than 50 polar bears and counting have descended on a village in Russia's far north. The animals are both adult and young, females with cubs of different ages and almost all of them appear to be thin. Not good, they're obviously hankering for some food. Polar bear visits are increasingly frequent and that just five years ago, only about five bears got close to the village. The polar bears normally live on Cape Schmidt, just 1.4 miles from the area but lately, conservationists said the area has been experiencing unusually warm weather, with weak coastal ice forcing the bears to search for food in the village rather than at sea. If the ice were strong enough for the bears, they would have already gone to sea, where they could hunt for seals or sea hares. Not the case this year. All public activities in the polar bear village have been canceled, and schools are being guarded to protect residents from the bears. Experts have said polar bear visits are now so frequent, the town should be permanently evacuated. <laughs> the Great Emu War Emus are nomadic. They don't stay in one spot for very long and take advantage of the food that's available and move on. Back in the 1930s, Australia's farmers faced a huge problem. Gangs of these big birds. Farmers had to protect their crops following the Great Depression, and the 20,000 emus migrating inland were destroying their yields, to say the least. So the Aussies ganged up and got guns, machine guns. Their thinking was that a mass killing of the emus could potentially save their land, show the big birds who's boss, so to speak, and they filmed it all in its vintage glory. Soldiers with machine guns were deployed to fight off the flightless birds. The bird prevailed in the end, however. Although the machine guns may have seemed like the best idea at the time, emus remain plentiful in Australia to this day. Don't be fooled, emus aren't just any bird. They're tall and they're fast. The toe claw of an emu are capable of slicing open a predator with no problem. Maybe a machine gun attack on a flock of wild birds seems a bit excessive in hindsight, but Australia has come a long way since the famous Emu War of 1932, especially in the conservation and protection of the nation's wildlife. <coughs> Monkeys sharpening stones Viewed millions of times on social media, this video shows an unsettling moment at a zoo in central China's Henan province. The capuchin monkey is a little too smart for its own good, it appears. Footage of a monkey in a glass enclosure shows a shocking moment when the primate desperately smashed a pane with a sharpened rock. Now let's dissect that. The animal used a tool, a rock it sharpened itself, to shatter the glass barrier of its enclosure. The monkey was seen sharpening the stone, then it started hitting it on the glass. Clever little monkey. The monkey is known by employees because unlike other monkeys at the zoo, it's smart enough to know how to use tools to crack walnuts, for example, or shatter its glass cage. Onlookers watched in shock as the monkey vandalized. However, the monkey seemed just as surprised as everyone else when the glass shattered. It jumped and fled, then returned to take another look. Thankfully, the reinforced glass wall did not fall after it shattered in place, and the animal remains in his enclosure at the zoo minus the rocks that were previously in his habitat. They were removed after the incident so that this cheeky monkey wouldn't try to escape again. <laughs> cassowary breaking and entering. At heights of six feet and six inches at their tallest, cassowaries are imposing birds that could injure a human. 
Since they can't fly, they use their crest and claws to protect themselves and stand their ground. In a fight, their middle claw acts like a dagger, standing at four inches, and can cause serious damage. Often dubbed the world's deadliest bird, they're terrifying neighborhoods and invading homes in Australia. One even attacked a man, leaving him with cuts and bruises, but no serious injuries. So Wildlife Control issued a statement urging people not to feed them. They may become aggressive when food is not provided, and you don't want to anger these birds. Along with animals such as alligators and wild cats, cassowary birds are listed as Class II wildlife in the United States, aka they're dangerous. A few years ago, a 75-year-old man was attacked by a cassowary that he raises on his property. His injuries were so severe that he later died in the hospital. And they were his pets. In their misplaced efforts to be kind, Australian residents have likely put themselves and cassowaries at risk. Seems the bird's ominous record of injuring humans hasn't deterred people from trying to sneak them snacks. <laughs> Invasion of the Baboons Visitors to South Africa might want to rethink their vacation plans. They could find themselves victimized by an unusually furry kind of felon, baboons. The cheeky primates have learned how to open car doors and jump through windows, and city officials are battling to control the increasingly aggressive troops. A local favorite, Kadaza, already had a lengthy rap sheet with authorities, so when he organized a band of baboons to raid a series of suburban homes, he was captured. Now he sleeps at a local baboon prison, although there's an online campaign for him to be returned to his natural habitat. Recently, a group of 29 baboons raided cars near Simonstown, a small coastal area. A baboon dubbed Fred opened doors and jumped through windows to look for food. Others climbed on car roofs and hoods, looking for ways inside. About 420 baboons in 17 tropes roamed the city's outskirts, especially the popular scenic sites along the coast. Baboons are a protected species in South Africa, but their pursuit of food has led to conflict with residents. And this is just the latest in Cape Town's ongoing dilemma over how to deal with the baboons who live in the mountains that surround the city. Now they often jump at the chance to roam through residential areas, hunting for an easy meal. Condor Occupation A congregation of condors in California, like this, as many as 20 individuals in one spot, is a rare sight to behold. For this person, this spectacle of nature was in her backyard. The homeowner, who lives about two hours outside of Los Angeles, was coming back into town when her neighbor sent her the first picture of the condor invasion. She had seen condors on her property before, but she was not prepared for this. The condors shredded a hot tub cover, knocked over plants, damaged screen doors, and slathered the deck in condor poop. Condors are an endangered species and one of the largest flying birds in the world. Their wingspan can spread almost nine feet, and they can weigh more than 20 pounds. Because of their endangered status, people can't hurt or kill the animals, but residents are allowed to make loud noises and use water to get the birds off their property. In 1987, there were thought to be less than 30 California condors left on Earth. Now there is an estimated 200 birds in the wild after breeding programs brought the species back. But for some reason, 15 to 20 of the massive birds decided to congregate in one location, on this woman's deck. Now it's a condor minium. Hmm. Crazy Japanese Game Show You're gonna have to bear with us for this clip. Japan has some strange ideas about entertainment, but this game show, let's just say it, speaks for itself. The description goes as follows. A grizzly bear pushes a glass box with a screaming woman inside. Need we say more? This shocking video shows a woman in a glass box being tossed by an angry beast, all in the name of entertainment. Since 1980, there have been only two grizzly bear caused human injuries in developed areas, an average of approximately one every 20 years. So we're guessing this box is extra safe, but still no less terrifying. The bear growls while the woman screams, but continues to keep her handheld camera trained on the beast. The woman is panicking throughout the 44 second clip, audibly screaming as the bear pushes, lifts and knocks over her glass box. It's hard to blame her for freaking out. The massive predator overturns the cage repeatedly, it would be startling to be that near a grizzly, but if that's the point of the game show, that's what the contestants signed up for. It's not as if players are normally blindsided by the basic premise, but humans and bears have a complex history. Glad things have changed. The Tawi Tawi Crocodiles 
A saltwater crocodile bigger than a car found its way into the waters of Seminole Town, Tawi Tawi Province recently in the Philippines. The reptile was found in waters between the fishing villages Manuk Manka and Taytay. No place for a salty, the crocodile measured 17 feet 10 inches, longer than an average car which measures up to 15 feet. It was the fourth croc to find its way into the urban area. The first, which measured 16 feet 11 inches, was found in Soka Bulan in September of 2017. The crocodile was spotted by fishermen. He mistook it for a wood log and when it approached, he was shocked that it moved. He immediately reported the incident to other fishermen and officials, which prompted them to conduct a rescue operation on the crocodile. And you know that can't be easy. During the rescue operation, the crocodile reportedly wrecked a boat and damaged a fishing net. It's very unusual for crocodiles to end up in Tawi Tawi, which has very limited patches of mangroves, where crocodiles are known to stay. But in the meantime, the municipal government placed the crocs in a seawater pond to simulate their natural habitat. We can't have man-eaters like this roaming the streets, can we? <laughs> the Monkey Mafia These charismatic primates live across Southeast Asia, and in places where they overlap with humans, they're known to be a bit of a nuisance, not least because of their penchant for stealing our stuff. It's important to stay alert when visiting macaque monkeys and sharing space. The monkeys won't give your belongings back until you give them something to eat. They'll steal something from you and hold it for ransom. Just until they get their favorite snacks. Like in Bali's popular temples, the long-tailed macaques who roam the ancient site are infamous for snatching belongings off unsuspecting tourists, hijacking their possessions until food is offered. So maybe carry some crackers or some fruit. This behavior, known as robbing and bartering, has been studied in captivity, but rumors have abound for many years about the same antics in the wild macaques. In fact, there are legendary videos of monkey-on-human crime where anything from flip-flops to sunglasses and, of course, cameras. Researchers have found that many monkey species are skilled at judging which items their victims value the most. So leave your valuables at home and maybe pack some snacks. The Angry Swan Swans are very protective parents. The male swan, called the cob, can be very aggressive in order to protect his young. Earlier this year, this man went out to rescue a cygnet that was stuck in a fence near the River Thames. He had to face a very angry cob that wouldn't let anybody near his poor baby. Problem was, he had to do it while the baby's angry dad was around. Human and swan interaction is something of a mixed bag. While swans and humans coexist because people enjoy their looks, interactions are not always positive. Humans have hunted swans for hundreds of years, but this is no longer a threat since the domestication and spread of the species. Male swans of all species will ferociously guard their nests. As well as protecting the offspring from predators, this also prevents the female from mating with another male. When it perceives a threat, a swan will rear up with dramatically flared wings and hiss, grunt, snort, and flap. This display is called busking. But this naked aggression is only for show. Most of the time, the swans are bluffing, a simple misunderstanding indeed. The video shared by the Animal Welfare Organization shows the angry father swan flapping his wings furiously at the rescuer who kept his cool and continued working until the baby swan was rescued. The Seagull Thief From the very beginning in this clip, you just know this seagull is looking for some mischief. But it's so entertaining, you're almost rooting for it. In this hilarious footage, an innocent tourist left his GoPro camera alone when a curious thieving seagull crept up on it and picked it up in its mouth while it was still recording. The bird flies, touches down once again, and even captures the tourist running after it. We can hear the sound of the tourist shouting and whistling for the bird to return with his device. We've all heard stories about how gulls will steal food right off people's plates or knock it out of your hands and then all their buddies turn up and feast away, but this seagull and the camera appear to be in a very high altitude. So, there may be a shortage of food, and it makes sense that a hungry gull might have a go at a GoPro if it thinks it's an easy meal. Plus, you get bird's eye views of the local islands off the coast of Spain, and the bird flies in a circle of the bay, then it touches down once again and rather humorously even films the annoyed tourist. GoPro Gold! Seagulls are notoriously stealthy, but this seagull might have a future in nature photography. Plus theft. Mm -hmm.